Okay, hopefully that is on full screen now. So um, thanks uh, for the introduction. As Victoria said, my name is Russ Edwards. I'm project director uh, for Latimer by Clarion Housing Group, and uh, I'm taking care of our tendering Colchester Borders Garden Community um, project. So uh, Clarion is the largest UK registered housing provider and over 350,000 people call a Clarion property their home. Uh, and I'm going to talk about our largest project and why we have put a conversation with young people at the very heart of our design process. Uh, but I wanted to start with a quote that has become something of a touchstone for the team. Uh, success is measured across two, three, four generations by the impact and legacy left for children, grandchildren and great grandchildren. This has become the key success metric for our project. Uh, the project itself, um, as I said, tendering Colchester Borders Garden Community, and perhaps one of the first things we should um, engage young people on is to improve the name of the project. Um, but we expect to deliver more than 7,500 homes. Uh, we're going to provide one job per household. We will allocate at least 50% of the area as open green space, which will include a new country park. There's around 15 hectares allocated as university campus expansion for the University of Essex. And there will be three distinct neighbourhoods and a new civic centre. We'll have at least five new schools and the potential for a new sustainable construction skills training centre. And the existing network of green lanes will be retained to form a new active transport network and the community will be served by a new segregated bus route connecting with Colchester city centre and the rail station. As part of this project, I've been lucky enough to visit some of the best new settlement designs across Europe, and the ambition for this project is nothing short of reversing that trend. So in the future, we want people to come from Sweden, Denmark and Germany to visit this place and to learn from what we do here, because we've created something special. But of course, it doesn't happen overnight. Latimer have only been involved in the project for just over two years, but the gestation period dates back many years before that. We're hoping to submit our planning application next summer and to start with construction activities in 2026. And we think it's at least a 25 year development project. For context, I suspect Many of us will recall fondly our first mobile phones uh, 25 years ago or more and recognize that we are living in a very different world now. We can only imagine how technology, AI for example, will transform society in the next 25 years. So our real challenge in many respects is to ensure resilience. I'm gonna read you a short extract from our vision whilst you get an idea of what the place is like right now. This is a place of poets and pioneers, of rebels and innovators, where the spirit of the place is captured in stories, rhymes, myths, and legends that have been passed down through the ages. We take inspiration from the way that people have worked this land, tamed its waters, and celebrated the sky at night, from the way they have created enduring, tight-knit communities where families stay and settle for generations alongside neighbours they have known for a lifetime. This is where rainfall is scarce, but fields are fertile. This is where Beth Chateau found the right plant for the right place, and where Jane Taylor gazed into the night sky to find the words for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. We will create the conditions for existing residents and new arrivals to make this place their own. We will be patient, responsible custodians of the land, sky and water. To find new solutions to pressing urban problems, we will embrace the local spirit of invention, creativity and a willingness to challenge the conventional wisdom and the status quo. Our vision, therefore, is to tell the stories of a new community. Why stories and storytelling? Storytelling picks up on the idea of timelessness and allows us to reinforce our role as long term stewards and custodians. Storytelling requires broad participation. It's an open invitation to work with local stakeholders. Storytelling is already part of this pl special place's DNA. And importantly, storytelling allows us to engage with young people. So perhaps stretching that theme to breaking point, 
the rest of this uh, presentation is organized into three sections. A prologue with a bit of an introduction to why young person engagement is important to us. The story, what we're doing right now, and an epilogue. Some thoughts on what might happen next. So I'll start with a scary photo of my boss. This is uh, Richard Cook. And I've worked for Richard for more than 10 years, originally as a consultant before uh, crossing to the dark side and working in development. And in many respects, Richard uh, could and should be giving this speech as he's very passionate about young people and ensuring that they shape the future. From day one in this role, I've had an unequivocal mandate to put young people at the center of our new community. I still have to balance the books, meet our timelines and keep our stakeholders happy, but not at the expense of giving young people a voice. A little bit about the place. One of the first things we do on any project is to undertake the research on the place. And here are a few statistics from our research a couple of years ago. We use a data-driven insights tool and that tool considers a huge amount of societal data points to generate a number of social impact priorities to target both ourselves through the development cycle, but also longer term through the Housing Association and our charitable arm, Clarion Futures, which is our principal social impact delivery partner. In this place, youth empowerment and involvement was identified as the number one priority. But there's also a really clear business imperative. I appreciate that I'm probably preaching to the converted, but uh, when given a voice, what young people say is really worth listening to. Much like any other large strategic site, this project has already been subject to around 10 years of consultation. Apathy and fatigue are very real factors that start to impact the conversation. But young people are often bracketed as a hard to reach category in this process. To give you an example, for our project, the local authorities have established a community liaison group, a really engaged, positive and active group from the surrounding communities that act as a sounding board and conduit for communication. Their terms of reference require 30% young person membership. When founded, they achieved around 20 to 25%. And now only three years later, they have none. It's not good enough. So we prioritize the establishment of a youth forum to supplement the CLG and our regular community consultation activities to make sure we had an opportunity to hear what they would like to see. We also have a fourth group in this conversation. So the community liaison group, our Essex Young Designers and our public consultation, but we also have the Lorax, who's our unofficial project uh, mascot. And he speaks for the trees. But we appointed our young people, or we established our young people for um, early in the process, indeed, six months before our uh, design team were adopted or appointed. So, and that was through our partners, Matt and Fiona, who you will hear more from later on in the, in the day. So what have we been doing? As I say, I hope I'm not stealing too much thunder from Matt and Fiona. I'm sure they will expand later, but as an overview, Matt and Fiona have developed a three-part strategy for us. The first has been to establish that youth forum group, in our case, the self-named Essex Young Designers, an incredible bunch of teenagers that have come together to discuss the project and help us to understand their priorities and also to get stuck in with our design team. A couple of pictures here are from one of the highlights of this year's activity when our Essex Young Designers participated in a workshop at the Eco City Conference at London's Barbican. Part two is a series of young in-school workshops where the team have worked creatively with primary and secondary school children in model-based workshops, helping the young people to develop ideas around buildings and places for the new community that were then physically modeled and ultimately exhibited together to form an incredible snapshot of what the new community could and should look like. Third was a summer school held in Colchester over the summer holidays again focused on making things. And some of you may spot me in the bottom right with my two boys uh, attending the family day, which was part of this program. Uh, my eldest built an art college and my youngest built a football stadium. 
But the first part of the works of the summer school was based on civic spaces that are necessary for a new community to come together. And the second part, looking at ideas for street furniture and making them at full scale. This was our first summer school graduates. But what I really want to draw your attention to here is the presence of two of our Essex Young Designers at our youth forum, the guys in the green t-shirts, who were paid members of the Matt and Fiona team for the few days of the summer school. A quick video to explain more about the event. Today we are doing a workshop, well actually it's the end of a week-long workshop uh, with young people in Colchester and Tendering who are looking at the design and coming up with ideas for the design of a new garden community um, that will be on the edge of Colchester and Tendering. So in today's workshop um, they're making full-scale prototypes of uh, furniture for the public realm, things like benches, seating, tables, um, so it could go in a temporary meanwhile garden which will become part of a series of activities and events that are announcing that this new garden community will be coming um, and invite members of the public to have their say and, and give their feedback. We're going to try to, we try to like help the environment incorporate nature into our city so it can be urban but can also be like rural at the same time. Everyone who's been here has always been like really nice and helped us make our imagination into actual things. We expect to be uh, building out for more than 25 years, but obviously the homes and the communities will be there for many years after that. So this is a place for today's children to move into, to live and uh, have, their, have their, their work, play, all of those kind of key activities for life. It's really important that the young people today can inform that space and help us shape what those spaces are like. I think beyond that, we've got a huge project to deliver and we need as many people mobilised and interested as possible to help us work out what it should be, what's important to local people, local families, local communities, um, because they're the experts rather, really rather than than ourselves. Everything today to do is like cutting and building the table and to such a real So I am Julia Bolton, I'm Bath Chateau's granddaughter and today we've been coming to speak to young people about a project that we're involved with which is a meanwhile garden. The young people have been tasked with creating some outdoor seating areas um, and areas where people can meet and it enables them to enjoy the surroundings. Um, I think it's really important the young people in, well, engage, I guess, in the conversations about how their towns and cities are shaped because ultimately they're, they're equal participants in it. And um, often when decisions are being made about towns and, and, and cities and how they're being shaped, um, it's them that will be using that in the future. So they should, should be equally part, part of that. I've really enjoyed my, ex my experience here. I think it's been great and I would definitely recommend it. It started with just some cardboard and now they're into like really big designs. They all look really good and um, like all the designs came from just like just one idea and they've all like been combined into a bigger picture and I really enjoyed seeing that. So uh, the epilogue, uh, what next? Well, the obvious next step and one that we're engaged in right now is taking the huge amount of input received uh, from our young people and the ideas explored across that three part strategy and making sure that our emerging designs are influenced tangibly. We've already hosted our Essex Young Designers at a design team meeting at our Master Planners studios in London. And I have to say it was a lot more fun than our usual design team meetings. And we will keep replaying how we intend to manifest their ideas through the ongoing dialogue over the coming months. It's important to say, however, that this is not a difficult or challenging process for us. We've been genuinely pleased how aligned the project priorities already are. Donuts, for example. This is an extract from Matt and Fiona's summer school report, where, as you can see, they've actually planned out the civic space that the young people created through their fantastic model 
and have drawn really clear suggestions for what can be taken forward. We're also expecting to test some of the more detailed emerging designs with young people. Play is a really obvious starter for 10, but also a really good example of how the young people and not the 40 plus year old designers can tell us what they need, what they will engage with, and perhaps just importantly, what they absolutely will not engage with. You've hopefully seen that the integration of landscape with the community is one of those clear common ambitions shared between the consultant team and our young people's forum. So we hope to strengthen these aspects of the design through further co-design activities as well. And perhaps more immediately, we would love to integrate the Essex Young Designers and next year's summer school cohort perhaps to help us with our first phase meanwhile uses. But what can we promise to all of these young, incredible young people in return for their time, their ideas and their enthusiasm? I guess simply put, we can provide employment and training opportunities, both during the development cycle, but also through those seven and a half thousand permanent jobs that we expect to deliver on the site. We can also offer homes, affordable homes in close proximity to their existing neighbourhoods, in communities where they feel at home and cool places to grow up in the meantime. Apologies for another cliche, but with this project, young people genuinely have the opportunity to influence the place where they will ultimately work, rest and play. We can also more directly offer employment. As I mentioned, we're a big beast and we will have a large team on the ground. We already have our eye on Frankie as perhaps my eventual successor, judging by his speech at the opening of the Young Person Engagement exhibition earlier this summer. My last couple of thoughts, as I've already said, I know I'm preaching to the converted, but in case there are any skeptics out here, or indeed if any of you need to advocate a strategy like this on your project within an increasingly challenging economic and regulatory environment, some observations that might prove useful. Young people are enthusiastic consultees. You don't have to look very hard and you don't have to convince them to give them, give you their opinions. Young people are inherent environmentalists. Young people are community minded. We've been really struck by how altruistic the feedback from young people has been time and time again. Young people are very articulate. They're able to explain their ideas. And young people surprise you. Perhaps uh, relating to the next point, that they're incredibly creative. Young people are demanding though, and so they should be. Young people are really honest. You know where you stand. And importantly, young people are not middle-aged. So they're an important uh, voice in, uh, in terms of diversity. I'm gonna include with another quote, one I'm sure that you will be familiar with, but cannot be repeated too many times. We don't inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks very much, Ross. That was uh, really uh, incredible to see how you're going through that process um, and the passion behind it. I suppose uh, just one kind, two little kind comments. Um, you talked about the youth forum and saying that's going through. Do you? And you talked about paid members of it. This is we often talk about. Actually, this why shouldn't they be? a page. Um, sometimes it's not usually in any budgets again, um, but you've found that is is that a, a, a really positive way, but it's seen as a voluntary at the same time, i.e. they're not doing it just for to get the money, but they're actually re being recognised for their worth. Yeah, I mean, I think um, uh, the budget point, you know, is a good one. And uh, you obviously touched on it earlier on. There wasn't a budget for this. When I when I took the project, um, having said that, the um, there was lots of things that there wasn't a budget for. So uh, whilst uh, uh, reviewing, you know, the strategic sort of strategy for the project and reflecting on what was important for the project, we were able to sort of shoehorn an allocation into the budget. And we we're also fortunate, you know, we have this charitable foundation as part of our larger business, and so future funding. Um, is in part through that charitable foundation, which um, is tasked with our social impact delivery. So we've been able to sort of internally 
access different pots of money um in part because of the recognition of the great work that matt and fiona and others have have been doing on our behalf um in terms of paying the um young people i mean the payment i, I mentioned was specifically in refer in, in reference to their participation in the um summer school but we're certainly covering transport costs uh we're certainly um providing pizzas etc um and i think i don't know matt and fiona might uh nod or or, or give me a, a a, a view yeah. on are we are we paying well, we, the, we, when the, and the, the young people are being fully fully remunerated for their for their time and involvement in in all of those 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 participatory sessions where they're bringing their their voice to the the table yeah um, and, and yeah you know and, and we i think guess that's that really important and you do too. that was probably a hard sell internally victoria but um but only because i think it's unusual you know and uh, we need to make it the norm i guess and I suppose the other just quick question on this is um, having experienced this, do you feel imperative that you should be explaining this to your industry? I mean, I'm talking about the developer, the house builders. Um, having seen, I'm a chair of an architecture and planning committee in Bath and new developments come through and they're much, much smaller, much quicker, but the actual engagement is, is minor or non-existent. But you're doing a long term and there are, as we're talking about creating new communities, new garden cities, what would you say to the, your industry about your process and whether how they would could or should take it forward in a similar way at least? Well, I mean, certainly, again, internally, uh, every budget for new projects does now have a young person engagement uh, line item. And the expectation is that we, you know, um, roll out this kind of approach on all of our large strategic projects. I think the strategic scale of our projects does give us opportunities um, that, you know, smaller scale projects perhaps don't have both in terms of time frames logistics my team scale everything else but nevertheless we we think uh and, and uh, sorry i that that young person engagement line item if you like in our budgets is is across all of our projects not just the large ones now i think in terms of the broader industry i i i've been um quite pleased that a lot of the uh, garden communities projects that i've spoken to do have um a young person engagement strategy now at various stages of uh, deployment and and at various I guess levels of integration um but you know it, it's certainly a more of a, a conversation topic at, at the garden communities conferences I was I was at one earlier this week and it and it came up a couple of times actually so uh, again I think we, yeah we have to we have to share the um success we have to share why it was such a good thing or is still a such a good thing for us but i do think there is a growing awareness particularly on 25 30 50 year projects um but it's obviously not mandated um to your earlier point and uh, perhaps you know that that is a an area to to push up Thank you. Well, I'm glad we're nudging towards um, the the must have rather than the nice to have, which is is great to hear.